event um, for Wearable Wednesday NYC. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, we're really excited to do uh, an event here at Mashable. Uh, Pete was uh, coming, but he's presently flying here from London. Uh, so uh, we'll have to meet up with Pete another time, but this is great because music and wearables are going to be a big space that just isn't right now. And it's going to be cool to talk about artists and audiences today about how wearables can help bridge the gap that is really overdue. Um, broadcast media versus the arts. And we're starting a little late, so I'm going to introduce the panel. Uh, I'll put my uh, little soliloquy within the questions. Um, hashtag tonight is wearable NYC. Please help me out with tweeting. Um, we have some great sponsors. Uh, let's go through them real quick. We have uh, Mandarin Napoleon Cognac, which is really tasty. Everyone should try it. Lady M Cakes, which I didn't have a piece yet, and I'm going to be uh, really uh, miserable the whole time before I try that. Uh, Hobnob, we got Brain Tonics, and uh, my agency is Accessory 2. Uh, and bye. Thank you, bye. Uh, my, my agency is Accessory 2, and we help fashion and wearable brands uh, explore fashion tech and also help big brands figure out where IoT and wearables are headed. Um, so please, let's, let's introduce the panel. Uh, I guess we'll start closest to me, uh, Chris Broadway Romero. How you guys doing? How are you? Just got here. There you go. Yeah. The good news is, uh, Track my calories running here late, oh. so I'm using my wearable. So I think I'm still on top of it a little bit. Therefore. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Sarah Polanski. Hi. Uh, I just made it in from Amsterdam, and it's a good thing I didn't actually lose my, my wearable earpiece plugs because otherwise I wouldn't be able to hear anything out of all those concerts I was at at Amsterdam dance night. How many concerts did you go to? I have the countless. Countless. I haven't slept in five days, but I'm here for you, man. Thank you wearable. so much. Thank <laughs> you. Ariel Hyatt. Hi. I'm, I'm wearing no wearables. So I'm, <laughs> I just have to follow them up. <laughs> Bill Hartnett. He sponsored Brain Tonic in hopes that I actually say something smart tonight. <laughs> and you know, it's funny, I'm, I'm wearing my fuel band, and I still do not know how you like what a fuel point is you know it's one of those things it's like sometimes i'll walk 10 miles and i get 300 points other times i'll go for a run and i'll get 1800 so <laughs> and it's brandon <laughs> yeah. I, I would have worn my google glass when somebody jacked it from the co-working space oh, wow. Wow. google glass problems glass problems <laughs> So I have the coolest panelists because they didn't even say what they do. They were just talking about wearables and being here. So, so, so that is the epitome of people that are excited about what they do, excited about sharing with everybody. Uh, after the panel, I hope that they're around for a little bit where everyone can talk to them about the space and what they're doing. So I think just generally, um, you know, wearables are like very hyped. They're, they probably understood, very misunderstood. Um, we're wearing them. I know wearing is part of the whole definition and they should be enabling, empowering, but they're not yet because we're experimenting. So just with, just with every other vertical, it matters who's, who's making it, who's participating, who's buying it, who's using it. And the feedback loop really brings the next generation for how here wearable entertainment would be really in a hyperdrive. So I just want to get a general sense from everyone like, how do you feel wearables could impact music, entertainment, TV? That's what we're going to be talking about today. So anybody want to take a stab just generally? Oh, I'm from DJ Mag, so I'll talk about the music and dance yeah. um, and clubs and concerts. And um, one thing is that wearables are important to, room, to have as little as possible on you so that you can dance. And I think that's something that's missing from live shows right now. 
is that everybody's standing there with a phone like this and nobody's dancing and what's the point of that? Right. So as more as we can embed this technology into ourselves and have little to hold, I think that's great for the future. Like if it's in a hat maybe, and I've got headphones and hats and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. But so that's, I really think the, the less you need to hold on to, the better. You know, you brought up a sub point right off the bat. So. If there was no social, do you feel people would video these concerts? Or are they, are they trying to show their friends that they're there? Or are they really looking back at this quasi-quality video that they took? I think, or, they're, or they're, I they? think they're trying to, yeah, they're definitely trying to, you know, preserve the experience, but also grab some social currency. I'm here, you're not, that type of thing. Also, I wish you were here, that, that type of feeling. And then the tools are getting better and better, too, with the with, with the the apps that come on the phones and things like that to really make more of a presentation out of what, what, what your experience is. So with wearables, like the key is, like she said, to have it more comfortable and kind of give it a, a sense of not being there, but give it added functionality. I think that's what we're, what we're really looking for. And I think we're moving towards it, but you know, how long did it take for them to come up with button standards or YKK zippers or whatever else is a industry standard for something that you wear? I think we're we're on the edge of that, trying to figure out like what is an embedded camera, how does it work? It's not a big block of computing power on the side of your head. It's just something that you know uh, a high fashion maker can just add into their into their into whatever they're creating. You know, like I'm pretty sure the standard hinges for sunglasses, and <coughs> things like that that a lot of the manufacturers wear. So as these different pieces start to have more technology embedded in them, it'll kind of create a network around your whole presence in that sense. That's how. It's about to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, I have to say, Mashable asked us to do mic checks for the last mic half check. an hour, and we did it. <laughs> so, I take full responsibility, and if Mashable doesn't let me go home tonight, and I have to do dishes, it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I think you two, because yours all the wireless receiver isn't picking up, so if yeah. you guys I'm, no, switch I'm, seats really? with two people over there, and get on the other side of this pillar, the wireless receiver should pick you up. We can do that. Yeah, let's do it. So we don't move in this way. <laughs> okay. So welcome everybody <laughs> to Wearable Wednesday NYC. <laughs> Music technology 2014. Why don't we Why don't we talk about the topic we were We just left off on. So basically, let's talk about the connection artists can have with their audience using perhaps technology. You know, I have, a, I have a great but simple example. Um, about two weeks ago, my girlfriend went to an Oprah Winfrey weekend. Yes, she did. And it was a weekend with Oprah, and it was out in Newark. And when they walked in, they all got a bracelet. And this is like simple wearable technology. My kids destroyed the bracelet, but it basically was a bracelet like this. And they all put them on. They didn't know what they were for. And at one point, they dimmed the lights, and Oprah said, you're all stars and they all lit up with flashing white lights. And throughout the weekend, the bracelets would light up with different colors and different things to sort of augment the experience. And she said, when those, the lights first went off and they, she said, your stars, like, every, like everybody in the place was crying. They just thought it was so amazing. And again, I think that what it, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated technology. There's all this great VR stuff that people are doing that you know is going to be amazing and it's going to be great, but it has to be incredibly simple and it has to connect with you immediately, and it doesn't have to take you out of the experience that you're in. And so I think something really, you know, again, it, it will be driven by simplicity, ease of use, and you know, it's it's why nobody carries a camera anymore. I got it on my phone, and so you know, eventually, we may not carry phones anymore. I don't want to talk on the phone. I just want my little mini computer. You may so, just tap your head and talk to whoever you're supposed to be talking to because everything is embedded, right? <laughs> yep. So I was doing some research tonight about wearables. Uh, I'm Ariel. I run a digital marketing firm um, for the last 20, God help me, years. I've been working with basically independent musicians and bands and labels and festivals, and we always try to help them come up with what is going to be the next thing to look out for. Um, and so I'm delighted to get into this conversation because for anyone in any industry, what I've read about as far as wearables is right now we're in our infancy. And yes, we know about Fitbit and about the Pebble Watch and we've read about, you know, Apple has this new 
um, watch that they're selling. And even at the US Open, there was all this technology that was going on with regulating the players' heating and, and their playing. So we're seeing all this really interesting wearable technology emerging. But I think, you know, this is like in 2006 and seven when I would go on, on technology panels for music and everyone would just sit there and stare and go like, oh, mp3.com sucks. You know, so <laughs> it's a really interesting time because we're, we're totally in our, our infancy with all of this stuff. But the thing that I'm happy to be here as like the digital marketing girl because what I can see about this technology is all of a sudden it's going to bring social media to a new place because all of a sudden, like Sarah pointed out, we're, we're not gonna be holding up our phones. There's gonna be some new way that, um, that people are gonna enjoy music, live music experiences, artists. And I think something to keep in mind as, as the conversation, which is now getting exhausting of, you know, everybody should be doing social, they should be engaging, they should be doing it right. We all know that, but we haven't even seen what the next iteration of engagement is gonna be. And it's all gonna start with wearables. Um, so from, from what, from what the what the future is predicting backwards is you know wearables don't have a lot of display capability right you have like a, a, a watch only has so much or you know whatever you can take with you as a portable isn't like a it's not a banner ad so a lot of people that have proven how to advertise and sell to people wearables is, is What's predictable is A, there's gonna be new social platforms that are gonna come up that are gonna incorporate wearables that we haven't even seen yet. And it's probably not Facebook or Twitter. But I bet you that Facebook and Twitter will be purchasing smart wearable companies so that they can stay on the edge. And then the second thing that I can see from reading all of this stuff is all of our wearables will integrate with everything else in our social footprint. So maybe we're just liking something or seeing something or snapping a photo of something and it will go into the larger picture of what it is we're gonna be doing online. Which is, as music people, you know, we're, you're a pioneer. I'm so excited that this man is sitting here. So, you know, um, with all of this stuff, you have to begin to think like, okay, you know, five years out from now, what will the possibility be? Um, so I just wanted to kind of bring that up along with, you know, how this panel was introduced in that you guys are all early adopters if you're even sitting here talking about wearables because it, it's not about a Pebble watch. I think it's about something way, I can't wait to hear what you guys are all working on and, how, and what, the, what you've got up your sleeves. I, I can talk about five years from now pretty easily. Yeah. Um, so, I'm Brendan, I work at Mateo. Um, we're one of the augmented reality providers in the market, we have about 40% of the market. Um, and all day I build applications for clients. Oh, no mic? No mic? I build applications for clients using augmented reality. Hands if you've heard of augmented reality before. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and um, basically you're aware that we use webcams or you can use tablets and we build applications for all kinds of clients. Now finally we're starting to build apps that use either Google Glass or what's known as the Epson Muvario BT200s. You guys seen those hands, BT200s? One, two. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean the Epson, big company, is actually making binocular transparent displays. Uh, just yesterday $500 million went to a company that's aiming to do the same. If you guys saw the Magic Leap announcement, uh, huge. I don't know, nobody knows, whole industry, big question mark. Real elephant. Yeah, I'm sure that's, that's surreal. <laughs> but no, it's, it'll be really cool. But um, the point is that we're building applications that can recognize 3D objects, and we're building applications that can recognize buildings today with an iPad, and if you don't believe me, uh, Megan here works for Mateo, and you can go watch the video later on. We're recognizing Domino Sugar Factory and showing you what it's gonna look like. Why would artists care? We're basically gonna turn the entire city into giant uh, canvas. Right? We'll be able to show content anywhere, and we're not going to have enough content. Right? We don't know what to put up. Like we, we go to clients, and we'll show you architectural drawings, or we'll show you how to fix an engine. But other than that, like why are the kids going to care? Like, I don't know. They're going to care because they're going to. Well, they're going to care because eventually. <laughs> this is awesome, and the lavalier <laughs> goes to the map. This is the passive technology part. Of it. <laughs> uh, back to wearables, but with their technology, I'm sorry. With their technology, and I'm sorry I didn't get to introduce myself. Right Right here? Really? Right here? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, I'm Broadway, um, and I'm a former creative director, new media director for 50 Cent. I was with him for about six years. He's doing great things in the world, but world now with SMS headphones. He's got some uh, partnership with Intel coming up with, uh, it's called Biosports. So it's going to be able to 
track your heartbeat and everything from your earlobe and all kinds of cool things like that. And with wearables, it's, it's going to be more about social media and the social media revolution, as we are tired of calling it, is more about what you're doing and who you are. But wearables will help communicate how you feel and you know the degree of it, and then also from a fitness perspective, but also from an enjoying a concert perspective. Or imagine partying with a DJ and he stops the music and his heartbeat is the beat. Those type of things, those type of new ways of expressing emotion through the enhanced technology of all these LED lights that can be controlled through one source, like the bracelet that Oprah gave out, simple RFID probably, or Bluetooth stuff connecting. Who knows? Who cares as long as it makes people feel good? And that's like where, where wearables have got to go. So um, reaching back to his point about what we're going to do with all this canvas now, if your five-year-old is happy with the TVs down in the back of the truck, are they going to be happy if they can put glasses on and see Mickey Mouse running around down the street? Because that's what augmented reality combined for wearables is going to be able to give you to put on some glasses and look at a whole new world from an artist's perspective, from somebody that created that world for you, or possibly from, from something that you created yourself out of your own imagination. So that's a very, very exciting development. I was just saying that before I'm over here, like, Google Glass is cool, but it'll be cooler when the glass that you can buy anywhere is either smart or not, and you might just pay a little more for the smart glass that Epson, not to misname it, because I think that's that's Microsoft's thing, smart glass. No. But you have the yeah, they have the other check. But what I'm saying is that 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 level of integration, where you know, ten years ago, if you wanted bifocals, you had a big chunk of glass chopped out of the middle of your glasses. Now they might shade down for you. Now your glasses might look really cool, and they serve all of those functions. So you already have wearable technology in those senses. But um, just being able to add it from a augmented reality means from where I'm standing, there's a reality creator from my perspective. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how I kind of get in and understand it. So you put these glasses on and I can turn all of you into characters and be entertained <laughs> in my own head. And hopefully still function, but that's what we're doing. We're going to head trips, you know, let's get it. And the, I think the final component, on uh, the final component, which it might sound simple, is it's a wearable. So it's got to look fly, yeah, look right? Good. It's got to look yeah. good. And there's like very few um, technologies that are that sophisticated that look good. I mean, they're giant pieces of glass and gear that you don't want to wear around your head. Um, I was at an expo in Las Vegas and my back was hurting me and somebody gave me a jammy pack and, and it had a speaker in it but it was made of faux ostrich and it was black and chic and it could hold your computer and it had speakers in it and headphones, blue, like all this Bluetooth and I'm just pimping out the brand because but I have nothing to do with it. I really just, I want, and everywhere I go, and when I wear that backpack, everybody asks me, what is that? So, because it looks really good. And then I'm like, but look what it can do. <laughs> so when artists have something, you know, you're not gonna endorse something if it doesn't look good, and, it, and it's not sophisticated. So it's the combination of the two that will bring it all together. You need the designers and the, you need Vera Wang and Bill Gates in the room. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, there's rumors. Which is not a pretty sight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At all. It's starting to happen. It's starting to happen. We're not those two in particular. <laughs> you know, and I think, you know, you look at this, and I think right now what's going to drive this initially is going to be the health and fitness stuff. And it's, you know, as that drives forward, and that's happening now. I mean, it's happening now. I mean, I, I bet you half the people in this room have a Fitbit or. Uh, fuel band or whatever it is that's going to drive real, drive forward and the data that comes from that the way you're feeling it you know you read about this stuff that you know there's clothing now that can you know tell your heartbeat your mood all these kinds of things when you tie that into entertainment and you tie that into sort of experiences I mean that's going to be kind of amazing and mind-blowing you know you look at there's a few apps right now there's one called listener which is you know provides it, it hears what you're listening to so if you're at a concert it gives you additional material, but right now it's like music news and it's headlines and things like that. And it's as cool as it is, it still takes you out of the experience. But when you can be served up something because of how you're feeling or what's going on in your mind, I mean that's that's kind of mind blowing. And you know, and I look at you know, I look at my kids and you were talking about like is your kid gonna be happy? And I my kid, you know, my older kid, when he was three years old for him, he's eleven now, Little Bear was everywhere. And that was a show that he liked 
and it was absolutely everywhere. And I grew up in a time when if you did, if you missed it, maybe you'd catch it in reruns. Now my kid expects wireless and his phone and video and the ability to play Minecraft absolutely <laughs> everywhere he is. Fast forward 10 years, he is going to be the biggest pain in the ass demanding so much technology just like every other 11 year old. And so you have a lot of work to do. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. No, I mean, and nobody knows what the answer is going to be. I mean, we can solve the problem technically in a couple of years, but who's going to fill the space, right? And if you look at EDM, I mean, nobody knows better how to just get a bunch of people really excited. I mean, the visuals right now, some of them, I have no idea how it works. Honestly, I look at them, it's like, oh my God, yeah. skulls flying around. Um, <laughs> and, and the kids. I mean, I probably will be dated by the time that this generation comes up, and we'll it's, talk. You know, we'll, we'll figure it out. But you know, the the kids will expect skulls to be flying around all the time. They're going to yeah. be walking around in Armin van Buren world 24/7. Uh, and when they're in a different mood, they'll shift and they'll be in James Blake world. You know what I mean? But the 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 curators, the people that create those experiences, uh, are going to be the artists, right? But how do you make that connection between, you know, uh, JavaScript? and lighting design, right? But that, that's what it's gonna be. It's all those people in between that like, it's, it's all the people in between that really know how to grasp technology and, you know, you look at, you can take that example and look at, let's say, the 3D animation industry where there was a bunch of nerds that didn't know exactly what it was gonna look like, but they knew that this was the way to go. John Laster and those guys and, you know, it, it took making the tools accessible, explainable, and easy to, uh, to integrate for the artists that had those ideas and created so that they, they can't be impeded with their ideas. So that's really gonna be the challenge, like for, you know, traditional, somebody that wants to be a film director, they can go take a film class. But if somebody wants to be a director in that term, they kinda have to forge their own path. So it's totally. gonna take very interested people and then connecting and then and events like this that really share that information and then spark the collaboration that's gonna take to, uh, to put great art on your canvases. Totally. And then um, if you're walking around in um, Armin Van Buren world or 50 Cent world, what happens to life? Because you don't need to leave your house if you can be with 50 all day, every day, <laughs> jamming out. So that's just another element that just concerned me when you said that. Well, I mean, well, the thing about wearables, though, is it, and especially AR, is it, it's adding to the world that's out there. So it would take you out now. Certain things like I think Microsoft is working on some for the next few generations of Xbox where it would be a projector in the middle of your room that'll turn your whole room into whatever environment you want to be in. That's a little more to worry about, but at least I think with the wearables and especially with AR, the mapping buildings and things like that, it's, it kind of challenges you to go out and you know literally see the world differently and uh, you know it's, it could be better, it could be worse, but I think just like every technology, like we're gonna we're gonna root out like the best the best cases to really like entertain and, and add on to what we're you know, to, to everybody's goals. Yeah. Yeah I mean just to, so, uh, so there actually are people today using wearables on their heads in automobile factories, and they use them to be able to see processes more clearly, like really complicated things with complicated machinery, and we'll highlight stuff for them. So, you know, I think productivity and like actually going through life and doing important things will be improved as well, you know? Um, the holy grail would be medical, to be able to look at a body and see MRI in real time, be wild. Um, but we build solutions for, for companies all the time. I'm not too worried about productivity, and I guess that would be a different wearable Wednesday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> bore everybody to sleep. But um, you know, I think that what would be really cool is if we could take productivity and utility and impair it with fun. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it's like, well, I'm recycling, but Fiddy gave me a high five after. So, I got for you. <laughs> you know. Case, I got a case, use, a use case for you right now. You can make the new drive in theater. With your product, because everyone you wouldn't need a screen. It would just let's pick a building to look at, and everybody let's watch the movie with our glasses on together. Well, that's I mean, honestly, so <laughs> augmented reality is okay. It's kind of cool, but the next five years is going to be all about VR, and that's what that is, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the, the most important wearable, in my opinion, for the next five years is Oculus Rift, yes. and it's getting a lot of a lot of flack because they're the first mover in a big way. But watch what the kids do on Oculus. That's what their kids are going to do in AR ten years from now. Um, and I didn't make that up, Professor Perlin at NYU is doing all these studies into how VR is basically the user interface for AR in the future. Uh, you're going to have movie theaters, you're going to have concert experiences, we should, 
if somebody isn't doing that already, pick whatever you're really into. You'll be able to share it with everybody. Um, and then 70% of it will be porn. So, did an article today about cyborg sex, um, and she said people can embed into your spinal cord. Basically, people won't go back. It's gonna get so weird. <laughs> I mean, like, if we're gonna have conversations with our kids, and it's gonna be like, do drugs. Do whatever you want. Get wasted. Just don't put it on. Just don't. Put it on. Don't fuck with that stuff. It's, I'm sorry. Excuse me. We're filming this. All right. We'll take a quick question. Are you guys worried at all, though, that um, all this augmented reality, all this VR, all these things, will create new barriers to entry for people that just want to create the content in a simple way? All right. So the question was, are we worried at all about barriers to entry for content for more traditional content creators? outside of AR or more modern approaches? No. Um, and the reason why I would say that is, at first, yes, 50 will lead the pack, or whoever has the most money at this point will be able to pay to get incredible experiences. But what will happen, which has happened first in the music industry, then we're seeing it in the publishing industry, that there will no longer be an us and them. There will be platforms and apps and things created to bring everybody else on board so that you'll be able to design your own experience. So yes, it will be hella expensive at first and the barrier to entry will suck. But then, I think about creatives now. When I started in the music business 20 years ago, you couldn't even get your music distributed unless you were signed to a major. Like, we forget about that. And then CD Baby came and disrupted the entire concept of distribution. And then it iterated and iterated and iterated. And I mean, I remember when mobile was a big conversation. Ringtone. And ringtones, and everyone was terrified. Well, I don't have the money to have a ringtone. And then now Reverb Nation gives you a ringtone for what? $14. So, you know, it all comes, it all comes down the pike eventually, especially in the music industry, where there is how many, five million independent artists that are just registered between Reverb Nation, CD Baby, Sonic Bids, like the larger sites, there are tons of people creating platforms that will, for 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 35 bucks, whatever it is. So at first, yes, you'll be left out, but then eventually it will all catch up. You have to be prepared, because you're totally right, the music industry gets it first. I mean, People heard Napster was coming, and those who weren't ready, well, they're, they're dinosaurs, and they've been chasing, running around the globe, trying to fix it ever since. Um, and now they have, and, and that's kind of actually why this dance music revolution came in, because it was already great, and it was about the experience. So, and then um, being an editor, and starting in print, like I've got articles from my days with, when I, a long time ago, back at the New York Post, that you can't find online. And all that, all those folded. And then books folded. And then movies started being disrupted. And it's the people who attend these panels and who pay attention and who are prepared, like a record, if you will, one step ahead. You gotta be a step ahead. And so you're ready for it. That's what happens, what's gonna separate. So, yeah. so it's interesting you say that. Uh, the question is for Bill, actually. And then you want to jump in right well, now? You know, I was going to talk about music because, I mean, and with content, we get really caught up in packaging. We get caught up in the container. You know, for years it was LPs, then it was CDs, and LPs then, you know, and it, yeah. LPs are back, back in a, in a, in a sort of a, like a, an artisanal way, like I'm going to buy a $20 LP. But, you know, the thing is, is that, all the, all the containers that we grew up with are gone. And so it's, it's, it's about new containers. I mean, there's still be plenty of great content, but you know, the idea of like, will there be like another thriller or, no, there's not going to be, but there'll be something bigger that's even, you know, even more different. But the thing is, is that we have to, you know, sort of be willing to let go of containers. And I think that's what has killed industries. It's what killed music for a while, is they were unwilling to let go of that distribution model, that's unwilling to let go of that model. <laughs> of that $20 market, you know, they could, or $17 I, I, a CD that cost them $2 to press. I yeah. used to spend, you know, $2,000 a year on music. Yeah. I spend nine ninety five a month on Spotify, and I, and I bought, you know, I probably bought 100 bucks worth of a vinyl from a band that's not on Spotify this year. And that's it. Who was the band? Dem Dyke Stare. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, other than that, it's like, and then you know, and, and the, the whole idea of like, 
you know, like rock music, which you know sort of ruled my life for a good part of it. It's dead. It's gone. It's over. It's done. And like you know, the idea of a bunch of old bands standing in front of a group of people and you have to like sit through bands. Nobody wants that anymore. They want to go to a great experience and like a seamless, incredible experience. So. Yeah. All my brothers are tonight. Well, <laughs> so my answer to your question would be yes, actually. I think there'll be a huge disparity between those who can and those who can't. And the main issue is education in this country, not to get too real, but coding and 3D modeling. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. There's a few people, right? And so I get to jack the price of my clients because we are the guys that can do it, right? Frankly. Um, so until that barrier to entry is lowered, there's gonna be a problem, and there's gonna be certain classes of society that can <coughs> afford wearables, and that know when they're gonna have a stroke, and there's gonna be people that won't, right? I mean, think about wearables and healthcare, right? I would buy Apple healthcare. I would buy, I'd pay 200 bucks a month for Apple healthcare, because they're tracking everything. Anyway, <laughs> point is, the time of creator, and all our stuff's actually free. And so I think a big part of what we're trying to do, not to plug us too hard, but we need to make sure that the tools remain open, right? Uh, Android open. You can make the dirtiest app you want and put it on the internet and that's fine. You should be allowed to. Um, we have a free demo online. The creator, I am not the fastest coder in the world. I use our tools. I can make a prototype in five minutes. So everybody should be literate in this new world. Um, we're trying to make sure that that remains the case. Keep an eye out if in the future you see that there's only one source. Like the, you know, uh, the iTunes app store. There's a board of people that approve every app that gets submitted. You gotta know that. Right? So people that get rejected. That's kind of a problem if you're thinking about free expression. Uh, no, if anybody from Apple is here, we'll go for drinks and we talk about it. But uh, you know, yes, it will be an issue. Uh, it's up to us and those who are aware right now, which is 0.001%, to make sure that literacy remains. I mean, to me, it, it, there is a huge potential disparity. Um, which I call the new divide between the haves and the have-nots of smartware. So uh, I think that the high class will have some type of threshold smartware as part of their system, be it embedded, be it part of their smartphone plus body. And then there's a group of people that are either using the uh, low grade cell phones or below that apparently won't have the connected information and the connected resources and I think that's going to be the unfortunate divide. Yeah. Cool. Um, I wanted to touch on uh, on, this, on this question as well, as far as uh, the has and then the, kind of the divide or the common divide possibly of it. But uh, I know for, for for one thing, he mentioned um, his son that plays Minecraft, and my, you know, one of my little brothers plays Minecraft like religiously, but he's no, he's three D model. It's nice. So he's yeah. he's being trained. He's, it's a game, but they're building stuff. So. Um, the the young the young the younger generation they're being taught to think in three dimensions more than just blowing stuff up in a video game. Um, there's cool, uh, more easy to get into platforms like Unity 3D, which you know are great. You know they, they make everything from Angry Birds on your phone to you know a shoot 'em up game and it's cross platform all the way to Oculus and you know probably what they're building too. I'm, I'm, I would assume like so it's it's happening. It's just it's about education and it's about genuine interest from. You know, people at an early age from saying, "All right, I just watched this Ninja Turtles movie. It was cool, but I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to get into this animation world and this 3D creative world, which really, you know, it looks like blocks and cartoony and stuff now. But like, eventually, you won't even be able to tell a human, a real human, from a synthetic one anyway. So the earlier, you know, you adapt to that knowledge point, which I think a lot of the kids are doing, and we kind of may not give credit for, but we have to create." What's, what do they do after Minecraft when they want to exercise that, that mentality of creation? Mm -hmm. Where do they go? Who do they ask? I think we have to help provide those answers. So who here had a, a Lady M cake PC so far? How, tas how tasty was it? Two? Can you guys can you guys check it out, please? I mean, one one of the things about these tech events is we get these great partners, and we, we need this this share the love. So so let's tweet that out. We have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Question. Um, I'm into uh, artificial intelligence and uh, um, how to kind of get insights out of big data. Right. That's my area. But recently I was in a, uh, I was on the West Coast, Silicon Valley, and was in San Francisco um, at a tech shop. I don't know, do you guys know what a tech shop is? It's like kind part of, of the maker movie. Yeah, you make shit. You just make shit. 
and uh, they promote like there was a Maker Day the other day, you know, like where Obama was at a tech shop pr promoting go make shit. It creates jobs, it, you know, make shit. So my question is, uh, I was getting a tour of this one uh, a tech shop in San Francisco by the guy who started it, and we were in the woodworking area of the tech shop, and the, and a guy was making a guitar. Uh, that was going to be a connected device that was actually going to, the idea, and I'm still not sure I really understand it. I wanted to get the collective wisdom of you guys, the panel. Maybe you might understand it. The idea was it was going to be connected to some sort of wristband where kids in school could somehow, through their, their wristband, uh, source music that would play on the guitar. So for instance, like they were actually making the guitar in the woodworking area, and then they were gonna bring that over to, they were doing a prototype, and they were gonna bring that over to the electronic department and then start wiring it, you know, getting it all wired up. Mm -hmm. What is, I mean, uh, that blew my mind, because it gave me, you know, it's, I started thinking about education in a whole new way, teaching kids. But any thoughts about, have you heard of anything like that before? Is it something that, yeah. you know? Yeah, it sounds yeah. like a minimized, you know, like pro any kind of a computer trigger that can make any sound, but minimal. You know what I mean? And I feel like through with a Bluetooth technology and a bracelet, you can do that. Yeah. But I mean, maybe that's really simplified. I mean, remember like the old player pianos that would just have the, the sheet music fed in and the perforator, whatever, would play based on that. Like it's yeah. not that different, just a wireless connection in that sense, but also the fact that it probably can do a lot more real time and interactive with somebody that's trying to learn. I mean, that is. It's exciting and promising. Like a smart piano would be something probably along those, along those yeah. lines, too. Huh? I, my friend Brian Feinberg, I, I don't know his Twitter handle offhand, but if people Google him, if you Google him, he, he had a great investment opportunity in a, in a kind of a live instrument guitar band, rock band type. So it's part of connected objects. It's one of the things that I think was the best invention there was the processing time mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that you could actually get to uh, no delays between music, um, but it, it pretty much everything's going to be smart, and a lot of things shouldn't be. That that's what we're going to see. A lot of people in these tech shops all around the country are telling me that why do we need a smart this? Why do we need a smart that? And then there's developers and innovators that think there should be a smart this and a smart that, and and everyone's right. You know, I mean, ultimately, it's in the idea, the execution, who uses it. Um, but every vertical is going to be upset and evolving uh, based on IoT. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so uh, I would be part of that camp. I'm like, I don't really like the guitar. Um, put a USB port in it. Like, why, we, why, like, we don't need to have a bracelet that talks to the thing that tells which song. In fact, that would probably be less useful than just having your computer talk Wi Fi to an interface on the, key, on the guitar itself, right? But the idea is there to connect everything, but we also need to be wary of like trying to connect everything. Yeah. You know, not to be a hater, but um, anyway. Not to be a hater, but you'll be. I will be. Yeah. <laughs> I will be. 3D print the guitar. 3D printers are wearables if what you print, you put on your body. Sure. So, uh, that. Mama store, top seller. Oh, yeah? There you go. Yeah, I don't know if you heard. So the Mama store last Christmas couldn't keep the wearable, they're just basically printouts of jewelry. Right. In, in stock. So th there you go. People are like, ooh, that's me by a computer. It was just cool jewelry. So we have a bunch of questions. You have more questions? I have one. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I had a question because there's a whole bunch of factors that come there on wearables. There's fashion, right? So are you going to have a, 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 a drawer of thousands of dollars worth of incompatible wearables? So there's uh, there's identity, right? I mean, do you, maybe, maybe you want to associate your identity with with something so that you have, so that the band knows who you are, but maybe you don't, right? Um, so there's th so this idea that, um, and I, I actually just want, want to ask you guys a little bit to dream a bit, that what, when you're talking about containers, this idea of taking the technology and decoupling it, does this need to happen for things to things to work? Do we need to have like a like a like a cufflink that we can put in like what Tory Burch is doing with Fitbit, so you can have artists and designers that are creating art well, you have actually maybe an open platform of just these little, you know, cheap little kind of connective things that we can pick up for $2 or $3. I mean, what would be the ideal way that, that a lot of this stuff evolves? And I'm just, you know, curious. It's a question about dreaming a bit, but since you guys are like 
putting this stuff together, would love to, to know what you guys are thinking about. That's a good question. Yeah. I think it'll be like, I think it'll be like objects today, right? I can buy a toothpick for a cent, I can buy a BMW for $100,000, and they have different levels of data integration, right? So everything will be connected. If it's not connected 20 years from now, nobody will buy it. Um, and toothpicks will have some sort of thermometer, I don't, who knows, right? But everything will have a connected function because everything will be connected. And we'll design them the same way we design objects today. Um, I imagine that there will be siloed solutions, Amazon, Apple, Google, you know, which implant you have will determine a lot about which applications you can run. And people will switch back and forth and it'll be debated probably as much as religion is debated today, right? Which one's the best way to see the world? But, uh, you know, and everything else that trickles down, it'll be, you'll, you know, as you're designing the physical product, you have to take its physical properties in consideration and you have to figure out how to connect it well. And just because you connect it doesn't mean that suddenly you should be on, you know, the Wearable Wednesday panel, right? <laughs> it's that it'll be your job to integrate it because otherwise it won't be useful. It, it will not stand up to competition. The market will demand it. Yeah. You know, Brendan was just a hater a second ago, and now he's a dreamer, and everything's connected. So, <laughs> to me, you, you, you had a lot of components in your question, right? Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if everything needs to be connected, but I think you need some smart in your system, and or there's a big movement for the personal data cloud. So, if there's no off button, we're gonna get fatigued and we're gonna not really like this new world. In the enterprise space, I'm scared shitless. When I have a wearable Wednesday at enterprise, I am gonna hammer these companies on, do not overwork <laughs> these people in an Orwellian society. That, that's gonna be a half an hour, and I won't make any impact. Uh, but, but ultimately, I think the personal data cloud is a huge thing. Um, our, we're giving away all our information right now. There's gonna be this quasi-anonymity um, it's going to be very genre based. If you're at a, a concert, it might come with your ticket. You might be on the grid in a quasi way for the moment. And then, then there's going to be like the, the, the Fort Knox of your life where ultimately what you hold, um, you know, near and dear won't come out. You know, that's my opinion. But not everything needs to be connectable, but you need to have enough connectability to be happy in 2020. Well, well, before you talk, if anyone else had anything else to say? Real quick. So. Yeah. It's, it's going to come down to standards and protocols and then function. Uh, what, what is this you know, t-shirt? Every t-shirt is pretty much like the same way. So the, the standard fitness shirt should eventually probably be that standard. And then what happens from there is, you know, it's based on, on the market. In some ways, like, you know, I've been seeing uh, headphone companies have been trying to do the sports, the sports headphones for a long time. They only just figured out that if you put a piece of plastic back here and let the, the headphones hang, people will sit around with them all day and use them because they don't look like a dork with the Bluetooth in the ear. But they still have this cool <laughs> color match thing hanging from the neck. I mean, you see, you see LeBron James on every commercial on, uh, on NFL and NBA right now rocking this. So they're st just starting to get it, but it only comes through constant testing, trying things, and failing before it can you know turn into a standard. Okay. So. We haven't, we're doing wearables and entertainment, we haven't talked about Beats yet. I mean, is Beats, is Beats a wearable uh, acquisition? I mean, what do you, what do you guys yeah. say? I mean, yeah, of course. All the sensors and stuff? Because people wear it for, they wear it for the form before the function anyway. Like, yeah. Yeah. Always, oh, Beats sure. headphones don't sound as good as Bose or whatever. Else. <laughs> but that wasn't what they were going for. They wanted to become the Air Jordan of your head. And they yeah. Did. Yep. They did. And now, but unfortunately now, every single headphone brand, and I, I, I have 8,000 pair of headphones, and I can get them branded to my magazine. I get my initials on them, the artist, you know, whatever I want. And like make them gold, and then like I want my face on one side, and I want the logo of them at this magazine on that side, and they can do it. From Soul Republic to Beats to, uh, give me some more, to, like they all they all do it. I'm like, I'm so many, I can be Mona. Like I live, they all can do it. So, do, um, I wear the ones, I'm not gonna say which, that, that sound the best and at work are the most comfortable. So I don't know, I mean, I don't, but if I couldn't, if I wasn't a, a person who did this for a living in the industry, I don't think I could afford these things. So that also leaves a big problem. So it's, what's the Kleenex of these headphones? 
Mm -hmm. well, you know, what's the next headphone though that, that not, not everyone can just make, you know, in the Chinese factory and slap a logo on? What's yeah. the next functionality yeah. of it? Like that is a standard that, that makes works. It needed. This, well, is this, is a great, this is a great question and it's something I want to get to. And I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Music Official, M-U-Z-I-K. They're, they're launching a smart headphone uh, next month. Um, another iteration of their products. Um, do you think smart headphones themselves? And, and first of all, I think I think head, I think headphones that aren't smart are wearable technology. Period. You don't have to have internet connectivity to have wearable technology. And I guess I'm in the minor. So. Oh yeah, they all. All right. So maybe I'm in the majority today. <laughs> so I, that's so, so <laughs> I good. Watches that too. Now, now I'm in the super majority. So. Um, I want to know if smart headphones, so right now you see like, like you know that saying, I'm probably going to butcher it, but you're in New York City and it's like 8, billion, 8 million people, but like if you wear headphones, it's a small, tiny place and you're isolated. Um, will smart headphones allow people, music lovers, not advertisers and marketers, to enjoy some benefit of discovery, geo-situated music, something more than just putting on and, and sharing a song to their friend on the subway or train? Yeah, yes, but not always. I think you, there's a time and a place for everything. And I was interviewing a, um, a DJ named Chris Liebing last week in Amsterdam. And not a lot of people listen to techno. It's very niche. And he said, oh, there's somebody. Cool. Oh, I love it. All right, well, <laughs> and um, I don't always love it, but sometimes. And he said, bicycle to techno. And it, and he was and and I was and I instantly my branding brain and my tech brain started going and I'm like Chris Lee, we need to be a spokesperson for smart wearable like sportswear technology because it, it's all he's like I'm telling you like you need the bicycle to techno and I never thought of that and so yeah well that's like a that's, billion but that's not techno that's like really hard this is something very specific <laughs> okay I'm it's sorry. niche that's what I'm saying time and a place. If that makes sense. Like, if we can do it without, like, like taking away the city and de deafening all the other noises, and we use it for our really special occasions, maybe that's a way of finding a happy medium between the wearable technology and having a life with human beings and seeing the buildings without always having music on. Yeah. And I think the heartbeat of all of this is music has always connected us. You know, and it will iterate and iterate and iterate, and Spotify can come and we can whine and whine and bitch, which is I'm in the middle of that every day. But the truth is, like, music is such a bonder that they will come up with a headphone yeah. that will do something so. that we can't even, and it's not going to be a Facebook share. I think it's going to be something it could be like peer to peer share. Like, I've seen attempts at it in the app format, I've seen, and I've seen it all like seen dating Samsung sites, it. like, yeah, you only like, date the person who has the music that you like, you know, I mean, they, we've, there have been a lot of things that, that have been tried with, with matching music. Um, so I think we haven't even seen the possibilities. All right, I'm gonna take those questions in one second. Um, you know, something that music's doing, the headphone, uh, and other brands that do, is kind of like, you know, our forefathers did with the Constitution. Um, they left it open. And people, brands that put an STK out and say, all right, community, here's, here's some of our stuff, build some more, that's kind of part of the answer here. It's almost like the more that we collaborate and share together, the more that those brands will ride the wave of what we could all figure out together. And they're a little bit less greedy. Okay. okay. Um, so Paul, earlier you said that a wearable doesn't have to be connected. But it still needs to be smart. I would love to just hear. Well, no, I, I, I said a wearable could wearable technology just means technology where it doesn't have to be smart. But part of what we're all talking about is smart technology. Okay. So what I wanted to kind of get your opinions on is if it's not connected, describe how it would still be considered smart in various mediums where where they're all wearable, but whether it be in headphones, or a jacket, or your glasses, if it's not connected, explain how it would still be considered smart. I'll start by saying, if it's fashionable, I mean, if, if you blend it with other fashion, um, technically, you could be considered cleverly 
smart by wearing something, but technically the wearable technology crew as an industry is talking about smart connectivity, smart interactivity, um, new ways to do things, and more ability. Uh, what I mentioned was more of an anecdote, I think, and more of not overshadowing some of the achievements humanity has had by putting technology on their bodies. I just have a really quick, this example here, I brought these out earlier just to follow up Broadway, but the truth is, if I had been raised with um, really cool earplugs, and these are by a company called Earpiece, and it's like they're affiliated with a lot of um, deaf foundations, and you know, if I, if I had been educated, I would, I'm really, I'm going, I have bad, bad hearing. I've been going to concerts, and it's my job to go to concerts for the whole list, and I never wore these. But these can be branded, and your favorite rappers and DJs wear them, and they come in cool colors, and you can't see them. So like, they kind of have this, I mean, I don't want to take up too much time, but, all right, there it goes. Like, you can't really see them once they're in your ear, and so these are smart, because they're on your keychain, and on they're branded to a festival, this one's Ultra Music Festival, wherever you are, you get them, you put them, and, we're saving our children's hearing. So that's a really smart wearable technology to me. Um, I, think, I think something smart if it collects information or data. It doesn't have to tell everybody about it. So you don't need an, inf like an internet connection to share everything. So um, a thermometer, it tells me the temperature. It could store it. They don't have to tweet it, right? So you could still have objects that collect data. Um, we have some biopharma clients. They have, there's regulations, you're not even allowed to have an internet connection anywhere close to somewhere where medicine is made. Because God forbid somebody hacks in and messes with it. Um, so everything is logged and then manually pulled via USB or whatever and shipped securely to somewhere where it's then analyzed. So you don't have to have an internet connection, you can still be smart. So that's a good point about synchronous and asynchronous. Yeah. So I came from the, very young, but I came from the video game world where I was knee deep into independent games, knee deep into virtual reality, knee deep into the cutting edge of what's happening. And then I left that world because I wanted to go to the real world and be with real people in music and concerts. And so this conversation kind of worries me uh, because you guys are talking about wearables and Microsoft's uh, Lumen Room technology where you don't have to be with people. Uh, but I still believe uh, very strongly that people still want to be with other people. Uh, that's why we're here. Um, so how do you guys think wearables and kind of everything that we're talking about will lead to situations where we're still with people, where we can have skulls around, you know, I, by myself in my room if I really wanted to have that experience. But I'd rather have that experience with other people. I think it's about, it's about seamlessness. And I think that that's, we're not there yet, but you know, you look at, you look at, there are so many apps now that tell you how much time you're spending on your phone. I have an app called Forest that I press a button and for 30 minutes I can't touch my phone. Because I think we want to be back in the world. I do think people really want to be back in the world, but when you can have that seamlessness to where, you know, reality, augmented reality, and virtual reality kind of blend, I mean, you're, you're able still to distinguish between them, but you're able to share that, that's where, and it could be years, it could be decades, but I do think those are the kinds of things that we want because I think we've all grown tired of all the crap we have on our phones. We're obsessed with them, but you know, you, at the same time, it is nice to have a conversation. And when you sit with people and they're looking at their phone, and I have, I have a notebook here, which I've learned, like, I'm a consultant, and so when I talk to people, instead of being on my computer, when I talk to them, I write it down because they think you're doing shit. Um, <laughs> but I do. I mean, it is. It's true because I think that we want to engage with people, and I do think. But I do think we also want to heighten our reality, and I think so. I think it's that seamlessness that sort of, you know, and it's. I mean, it's the kind of stuff you're building, which I think is going to be, you know, that's the future in a lot of ways. Like, we want to enhance it, right? We want to enhance presence, and the thing about it is like, yeah, to sit in a room, in a virtual reality room, could disconnect you from reality if it's purely like a synthetic experience around you, but what if it's plugged into 100 other concert goers, live feeds, and you're just in the crowd with them somehow through that technology? Yeah. That's one way, and then also, this is a fuel band now, but it could be a 
mood band later on or a singles band later on or whatever else could draw me to gatherings of people that are like-minded. Mm -hmm. So I think if we look at it in, in terms of that, and you know, with, with, the, with, with, with the, uh, the Oprah thing, like where she gave them something, they didn't know what it was. You know, they say well, great technology is indistinguishable from magic. I'm probably butchering the quote, but that's, that's what we're talking about here. So yeah, it's gonna be scary at first, but you know what, a skateboard is scary if you don't know what to do with it yeah. at first, right? <laughs> it's true. But, it's not scary anymore once everyone knows how to ride and feels good and he's not bust the head open and riding the right. So same thing with this stuff. Let's figure out where the dangers are, look at them, and then create great experiences around it. Okay, great. I think we're going to wrap up soon, so I'll take two more questions. <laughs> really? You know, so it's good because it goes with this question. So since you guys are all in music and a lot of music, the experience is live, are you worried that more technology will take away from the experience? Because 10 years ago, you used to go to a concert and watch it. Now you miss most of the concert because you're taking a photo, <laughs> trying to find the right filter, and you post it on Instagram. You're playing your favorite song, but you're like, I only have 10 likes. Maybe I have to take another photo. <laughs> 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 if you look, people aren't even watching the show. And the this Beyonce meme was like, she was singing to the girl, and the girl was so busy filming it, she had Beyonce in her face and like didn't even see it. So do you worry that like more tech is just gonna make us even further removed from the experience? I think it'll be less intrusive tech. Yeah, that I was, I think I said that earlier, like, the more compact it gets, the better, because then that will save the it. The more invisible, right? Yeah, the, the more, more like, invisible, that, yeah. I think it was like, one of the very first things I said, like the, when it, more it can disappear, you just be like, Okay, Beyonce singing to me. Smart jeans. Film it. That way, I, I'm in the <laughs> moment. Yes. And also, any any best. Right. Yeah. And it might be yeah. your jeans. It so might that way, connected whatever it is, or your hat, or whatever it is, or your shades, then it's more. Kind of interrupting. I think I think we know how much like media we can take in. I think you know a lot of people have 50 tabs open at a time. You know, if I'm missing the show, I'll know if I'm missing the show. Like I'm, I think current generation can hold up a phone watch the show, take it all in. I'm not too worried about it's that. about how much do they enjoy it. Not how much do they watch with their eyes. Who cares? We can't judge what their eyes took in and all of those, all that stimulation, but you can judge what your camera say, look at it later on, or share it at that moment live or close to live. So I think, I think people are a little overdoing it when they're worried about phones being up in the air because it's, it's literally like, that's your power kind of, it's like your yeah. external brain, so you just stick to your brain You won't remember it otherwise, you don't remember it anymore. All right, so name, so name one artist or TV show that would be okay with an audience contributing or collaborating with the program rather than broadcasting it out. With the program. Well, yeah, with any the concert, show. with the program? Any talent show? Yeah. show. I would, so we had our DJ Mag Top 100 last week, and it's like, there were, um, every, we want everybody, everybody watching. And the DJs that performed, it's a countdown to the number one DJ that year. And that's a huge title. They're gonna be booked all year for quadruple the price that they, you know, and they're also gonna get that title. Just like if you win the Grammy, you like your booking, your life is better that year. And so everyone watching the live show, you want those hashtags, just like right now. But it only those con those are their concerts. There's the festivals, and that's how it went down. And there's live DJs, and you, it's like, and the tweets were uh, it's like put up on massive LED screens. So in those environments, it brings everyone even together. You're like, there's my tweet. Like it's 300 feet, you know, tall. So well, that was it was a pretty yeah, cool what about experience. Like, what about like a set list, or what about like like right now, iHeartRadio does this Saturday Night Online, which is this is kind of cool. I, I don't know how, how real it is, but like, you know, they're, they're taking all different social media channels and then the DJs putting songs into the mix that are part of what people are proffering. I mean, what kind of genres or what kind of artists uh, would, would do that? And, and then which, you know, traditional types are, uh, might, might surprise you? I think, I think we're overlooking, you know, we're thinking about just the people that are at the concert. But I don't want to bring up Oculus and beat it to death, but you have one 360 camera and a decent microphone, you can have an infinite number of people there. Yep. And that's going to be a huge industry in the next five years. It's the third life? How much, yeah, exactly. How much does it cost me to go watch the Lakers' sports site? Like $3,000? 
if I could pay a dollar, if I could pay five dollars, look into a camera and then sit next to my friend who I don't live near, answering your question, and we can experience something together and have presence, I'd pay five bucks for that. I'd pay 30 bucks for that, right? It's like going to a movie. So I think to, that kind of answers you. Like, that's just something we're not really touching on. Uh, the people at the concert are already having an awesome time. I think it's about pulling everybody else in, but that's just me. All right, so take oh, one oh, last so question. Jolie, what's up? Just on that. Um, 5K, we're going to be bringing in these new frequencies, like 60, you know, 60 gigahertz and so on. Massive bandwidth won't go far, but it means that when you walk into somewhere with the right device, you can download more data than you've ever downloaded in your life mm -hmm. instantly, have instant virtual reality with volumetrics, which means, to your point, is that once you go to this place, you'll be able to experience something with a bunch of other people in the room by yourself, moving around, looking at something that is, in fact, virtual, but it will be a shared experience. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We call it is local. that a question? Local 3D caching. Is gonna come from? Like, in my mind, there's already a lot of technology and wearable. Like, when you go into any major concert venue, uh, they care about security, so you usually pre-register a wristband. So the venue knows who's there, but they're not doing anything else with that. So <coughs> who do you think is gonna fund the other? They are, they are. It's health and entertainment, I mean, you know. Like, what makes more money in the NFL and the NBA? So who's got the flying wire cameras ahead of them proving drones to be flying over NFL games? They're the ones pushing that line. So they're the ones that are going to, you know, when we can fully get biometrics on every football move that happened that day, when you can download that data and throw it into Madden yep. you, you know, 2020 and watch the whole game from every angle and not know the difference. Like, it's because these industries are such billion-dollar industries already that they have to have R&D looking at the best of what's going on, you know, on the technology side and how, how to apply it back. So healthcare and, and entertainment, I mean, and I guess we're, we're, we're here doing the entertainment side of it, so it's gotta come from entertainment. And they are doing, like, a lot of these um, festivals and, and concerts, when you walk in with these wristbands, you have to, uh, there's a little voodoo, you can probably explain it, a little doohickey that you, it's in, it's in a bed and you hit, and every time you walk in through a certain door, it, it clocks you and it knows who you are. And so if you went to the hip hop room a lot or you went to the, the drum and bass room, musical, like they're actually get capturing data on you. They, you. they know your ticket number and then they know your bracelet number. Yeah, it, it seems like Disney is the Google evil in that category right now. <laughs> yeah. so, but yeah, definitely community driven you. brands. I mean, yeah, yeah, right yeah, now, yeah. a lot of music goers are giving information out, but they're not giving anything back. At least sure. right now, right? So I'm wondering if you guys saw a future matter of then and who it would be oh, yeah. by it, who would be a record label or an yeah. individual artist. I can see like, like when we talk about what, what what would the next headphones do, it's like sensing what you need to hear. Just oh. like you think the radio played your song right at that right time, but really really played the song that researched the best and they put the most money behind. Mm -hmm. But you can convince yourself it's for you in that moment. <laughs> totally. So what what happens when that shift and it's really personalized at that point, right? So yeah, there's a term I've been working on called personalized reality. Which just basically everyone can have their own experience walking around or looking at the audience and thinking right. of different heights. All right, well, awesome. we, we got to wrap up. Everyone, please, let's grab some more drinks and food. Everyone say thank you to everyone.